Uh, this is the second video that I promised that I'm going to show you how to do the extrusions and how to set up um, and create your UV maps that will be just like the UV maps that were in Marvelous Designer. Okay, well we're back here with the sub proxies and these are the original lofts up there and these are the sub proxies down here and we're actually going to use the original lofts to create the, um, the extrusions um, and whatever you do up here to the original lofts um, the changes will be propagated down to the subdivision proxies so um, so let's see so first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into edge edge you want to select the edges here and go select continuous edge and now we're going to want to extrude them. So we're going to hit the extrude button. Now I don't like these handles. I've never really liked them, so I just go back into the move tool. And now watch. This is the magic of using sub proxies. Get a really nice extrusion a nicer extrusion than had we selected the border edges of the sub proxies and did an extrusion from there. Um, so now what we want to do is because clothes rarely have such a hard edge and even if those edges were set on smooth probably wouldn't look that nice. I like doing a bevel on the edges. And again, we're going to um, oops, select continuous edge. And we're going to go to edit, edit mesh, bevel. And these are the settings that I use. Um, fractional, uh, world, you know, these are the, the numbers that I use, segments just one segment um, automatically fit beveled object and there we go got a bevel there automatically bevel applied there awesome so now we're going to do our UVs so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make duplicates of the original lofts so we go edit duplicate, move them out of the way. Okay, one of the nice things about when you do lofts, the way I showed you, is it creates these really nice rectangular UV patterns. And if you just want to use um, seamless textures, you can simply select that, come down here to layout, and these are the settings that I use overlapping, all intersecting, um, stretch to square, bounding box, and what have you. And when you click on that, it brings it makes your UVs a nice square pattern. Um, you might have to rotate them, you might have to flip one of them, but if you rotate and flip one of them just right, um, what you'll end up with is um, both these, the front and the back, will have nice square UV patterns which the edges match up so that when you do a, a seamless texture you, there will there'll be no seam. The pattern will just continually flow all the way around which is really nice to have. But we want to have UV patterns that are pretty much identical to what you get in Marvelous Designer. So what we're going to want to do, go into Edge, select Continuous Edge, And we're going to want to pull this down because what we're going to be doing is we are going to be using planar mapping and um, and I like to scale these in so it, it keeps this nice line.
that looks good and we're going to do the same thing over here select the edge select continuous edge do the move tool move this up a little bit come in here and scale it out just a little bit so that it matches that looks good Oop. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Okay, then we go back into object mode and we'll bring the handles back in and we're going to go into um, create UVs, planar mapping and these are the options that I use. Bounding box, box, camera, you know, image height and we just want to make sure we don't create new UVs because we want to replace the old ones. And these are the old UVs. Project, those are the new UVs. Okay, now we want to get the UVs from here, from the one that we just made, over to the subproxy. And how we're going to do that is we're going to copy mesh attributes onto the original, because whatever you change over here gets gets propagated down to the subproxy. So you click on the the um, the mesh that has the new UVs hold down the shift key and select the original um, lofted surface and then you're going to want to go um, mesh copy mesh attributes and you're going to want to have UV set you click copy and now the UV set that has the new UVs okay and so that's and you would do the same exact process for the back but I want to show you a few more things that you can do with the sub proxies that really have a lot of advantages. Remember, whatever you do up here gets propagated down to here. Okay, so remember, whatever you do to this, to the original loft, it will be propagated down to the sub proxy. And so, say you wanted to insert some edge loops to give it some more definition. Um, in an area. You can do that. You can um, um, insert edge loop and you can just insert just where you want it and you'll notice there it is. And it will follow the actual shape of the, the mesh, of the 3D mesh and anything you can think of you can do. The only thing you got to remember is that once you start doing the extrusions, once you start moving vertices around, the um, um, the original loft spans you won't be able to really play with because watch if I do 15 see it gets all messed up and of course it's going to be messed up over here but we could put this back to 10 and everything goes back to normal but you can do anything here you can um, merge vertices together and they will merge over here as long as they stay on this horizontal plane it will follow the shape of the actual um, of the actual 3D mesh so if you wanted to mer if you wanted to um, move edge loops you know say you wanted to um, let's see well let's do vertices our vertex I meant okay so say you select all those and and then say you want to average these vertices okay now watch what happens mesh average vertices whoops <laughs> I meant to hit the G key it actually follows the shape of the mesh and we'll just control Z back out so say you want to um, have this this curve 
be a little smoother, right? And you don't want to insert edge loops all the way down to the bottom. You could then go um, mesh smooth. And now you've added detail without having to add detail all the way down here. So you can do just about anything, you know. Um, you know, say you wanted to, um, you know, merge the vertices together so that there's, it's a little bit smoother. Snap to point, snap to point, select those two together, and go edit. See, we have three over here. That stands for the vertices we have selected merge. Now we have only one vertice. And it reflects over here. You know. So just remember, whatever you do over here, will be reflected over here. And as long as you stay in this horizontal plane, um, moving these vertices around, it will follow the mesh, the real, the real shape of the, of the 3D mesh. You can insert edge loops. You can um, average vertices. You can use smoothing techniques. Um, you can um, do just about anything and it will merge over, it will be propagated over here and it will follow the actual three-dimensional shape. So I hope you see how and why this can be so powerful. You know, if you wanted to get rid of an edge to, to lower the amount of, whoops, into lower um, the amount of vertices. Select edge, delete edge vertex. And we just deleted that edge. You can, anything you can think of, you can do um, Let's see, say you wanted to use what I call the planar cut tool. Cut using a face. You could insert detail that way. So you, I hope you can now see why the sub proxy is so valuable in doing your mesh. And I hope um, that somebody gets something out of this and uh, that it really helps a lot of people.